on this episode of Edge of the Web. But one of the areas that we didn't really expand that into until very recently um, is that same mindset of using data and that same mindset of testing in our own operations of our marketing organizations. Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend-setting guests. You're listening and watching Edge of the Web. Winners of Best Podcast from the Content Marketing Institute for 2017. Hear and see more at edgeofthewebradio.com. Now, alongside Tom Broadbeck, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. Hey, we're walking, uh, We're broadcasting from Edge Media Studios, located in downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. Every week we bring you the latest trends in digital marketing and marketing influencers from around the around the country, around the world, actually. Check out our recent shows at edgeofthewebradio.com. We're powered by Site Strategics, your, your, uh, your pioneering uh, digital marketers focus on agile marketing. And if you want to know what that is, guess what? We're going to talk about it today here uh, on the show. So you can also learn more at edge uh, or at sitestrategics.com. That's S-I-T-E strategics.com. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks. I'm the founder and CEO of Site Strategics. And the reason that we do this show is, is really to, to be able to disseminate and demystify digital marketing strategies and techniques and to be able to uh, really kind of share uh, some great information and great uh, uh, movers and shakers, uh, influencers around the country and the world to our audience. So uh, we're really uh, interested in, in being able to unpack these type of concepts on a regular basis. Uh, I would like to introduce to you a few people in the studio today. So uh, to my left is the actual uh, director of digital media. Got it right this time. Thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome. That's Thomas Broadbeck. It's only uh, episode 234. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you haven't been that title. That's for true. That long. I've had several titles. You have. Exactly. Well, I'm thinking of you right, right now, actually. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and to my far left, uh, a, a newbie to the show. Yes. And we will castigate him regularly throughout the show. This I will is uh, respond in kind. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to talk into the mic like this for the entire show. <laughs> uh, uh, he is the chief of chief operations officer of of uh, of Site Strategics. That is Jason Fletcher. How are you doing, sir? I am fantastic. Thanks for asking. Even more so as you're in the studio, right? That's first time. for the first time in a year and a half. Feeling a little bit of the magic? Yeah. A little bit of the sparkle? Not nervous at all. Oh, well, you totally should Totally ready. There are thousands of people that are watching you right now. You realize That's that? That's true. I'll just apologize up front. <laughs> 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 and let's introduce our guest to my right, uh, Mohammed Yasin, Director of Marketing over at Perk. Mohammed has actually been on the show more than you have, Jason. True. That's yeah. true. That's true. I have. Should we have? Thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I mean, I can <laughs> leave if you want. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. <laughs> But Jason's wearing a nice shirt. It's yeah, I like your shirt too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, twins. <laughs> we you, guys, you guys want a moment together? What, what's sure. what's happening? Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Make yes. it as awkward as possible. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Muhammad, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Today. <laughs> doing great. Thanks for having me. We You're more than it. welcome. Well, we certainly uh, want to entreat our implore our uh, uh, live audience to go ahead, go ahead and share this show and 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 you know share it to your tribe because we certainly are are uh, wanting to be able to to get in front of uh, who you're regular influencing uh, and and be able to bring some of this the, the message of agile marketing as well as what we do on the show uh, to them on a regular basis and more importantly ask a question because this is a live broadcast uh, too bad for our podcast listeners but you know what they can turn into a lot of Facebook live listeners as uh, watchers as well ask a question because we're monitoring the uh, the Facebook live feed and uh, you could you could be part of the show just that easy so uh, check out to our audio listeners check out all of uh, all of our channels channels where we, we're moving that podcast uh, on the different platforms. We have iTunes, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Podbean, Spreaker, a Acast, anywhere else that we... Uh... Lipson, we're also we're obviously on Lipson. Lipson's our host. Uh, yeah, Player yeah. FM and Overcast are pretty popular. We get some listens from there as well. Yeah. But if we're not where you are, you know what we can do? We can we can we can fix that. So uh, give us a give us an email or contact us if you'd like to see our podcast on uh, your uh, player of choice, your platform of choice. Just give it a shout, and we'll make sure it gets there. So uh, this segment is actually brought to you by SEM Rush, uh, the world's leading competitive intelligence and keyword research tool, trusted by over one million marketers each and every day to give them an edge. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, nice. Over the competition. Nice. <laughs> like a yeah, sweet, huh? Uh, if you want to see exactly where your competitors are, are advertising online or where they're ranking orga organically, just go over to uh, the site semrush.com forward slash edge of the web, and you'll be able to sign up for a free 14-day trial. i got to tell you guys that the the uh, the software they have there is fantastic, and they're constantly changing it and, and improving it. They've got projects, brand trend, uh, trending tools. Uh, there's so many cool things, and we've yeah. really started to dial in and using using their their, their software as a regular uh, reporting yeah. engine for uh, site strategics. Yeah, and we're on Facebook Live now, and they do some regular Facebook Lives as well, some great seminars and webinars as well. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely check out the, the, Absolutely. Uh, their work. Absolutely. All right. So as we are doing regularly for our first segment, let's let's take you through some latest digital marketing news. I was very excited to start my reportings. This week's trending topics. Okay, so uh, first on the on the uh, ticket for our t our news today, our digital marketing news, da Dallas Morning News. Check this out: the bride and groom who slammed Dallas wedding photographer online in media must pay. Get this: a one point zero eight million dollar settlement. This is from Claire Cardona. Tom. Uh, un unpack this one. This is incredible. Yeah. So like you said, a uh, Dallas wedding photographer was awarded $1.08 million on Friday in a defamation lawsuit against a local blogger and her husband who launched a social media campaign uh, that destroyed her business. She had a photography company for 13 years. Uh, she was a, uh, a higher end photographer, as uh, she uh, said here in the article. Um, and then just this local blog called A Complete Waste of Makeup. Mm. <laughs> the name of the blog. Um, yeah. In October 2014, they hired uh, the, photog the, the photographer to do their wedding. And after a couple of weeks, they inquired with the photographer about where uh, their prints were. And the photographer said part of the contract is you have to choose a cover photo before she'll release you the photos for $125. So it was all part of their contract. Okay. They didn't choose a cover photo, so she didn't give them the... The photos. And so, seems pretty simple. And so she said, well, it's simple mis misunderstanding. We'll cover the costs. And they decided to just to destroy her business. So they called local TV wow. stations. The blogger called local TV stations and said uh, that a wedding photographer was holding their photos hostage. And the show kind of went viral wow. there so within the Dallas this area. This is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, anybody double double think that? I mean, just literally, should we be actually just just going after this photographer? So, yeah. so the yeah, case. So, so it gets a little bit crazier. So, uh, <laughs> so let's see Facebook. So they had some fake Yelp reviews. So as it, as it went viral, some people started leaving fake Yelp reviews. One person said yep. uh, that they got AIDS from the photographer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is <laughs> wow. Uh, so a lot of those, a lot, a lot of those. Uh, Reviews have been removed according to Yelp. Um, but yeah, she said she would normally book between 75 and 100 weddings within one year. And last year, she only booked two. Flatliner. Mm. Okay, so she put all this to the court system. Yep. And guess what? Somehow yeah. she's going to get $1.08 million from the people, which I doubt she's going to get, but it puts them in a nice hole. Absolutely. And also sets a bit of a precedent. It definitely sets a precedent. Yeah. And when we're talking about the social economy that we're in right now, um, this has teeth. And and all things you know, you, you know the, the the anonymous Yelp reviewers will never be penalized. No, but I mean, never. You, you know <laughs> that there's at least some sort of I don't want to say retribution, but some sort of counterbalance to this entire everybody who's who's got a bridge to burn, everybody, everybody who wants to sit on their soapbox and start barking at the world. I mean, there's literally a, a, a reconciliation, one way, shape, or form for for at least this uh, this photographer, right? Yeah, that's. It's tough. She said she's going. To, she's looking to to restore her photography business, yeah. but uh, it's difficult oh, to build back up in the ground like, up after yeah. thirteen years. Though, after right? thirteen years, oh, yeah. and you've just gone through the court system since was it 2014, 2015, oh, two gosh, years of a long time court costs and litigation and yeah. and all that. It's tough, tough to come back from. So I also wanted to thank uh, Ronell Smith, fan of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been on the show as well. Yeah, uh, he, he's a Dallas native, and he had 
on some nice comments about this article, so I picked it up from him. So thank you, Ronel. Cool. Nice. Very cool. All right, another article that we have from TechCrunch. Uh, Twitter tests $99 monthly automatic tweet promotion service from Daryl Etherton. Uh, so we've got uh, Twitter out there, and uh, yeah, Twitter might have actually found an interesting halfway point between charging subscriptions and its traditional advertising revenue model. This automatic promoted tweets uh, that they have here for a flat $99 monthly fee could appeal to power users and brands alike. How about lazy people? Exactly. Maybe, maybe that's <laughs> there. Exactly. Uh, they, they forgot one individual. <laughs> the service spotted by uh, by Matt Navarra when when Twitter emailed him as a as you know, past Twitter as user automatically automatically amplifies your tweet and profile uh, for a full 30 day period. That's amazing. Why wouldn't you want to jump in there? Because not every tweet needs to be amplified. No, 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 no. Every tweet. <laughs> every tweet. What are you talking about? How yeah, I'm a long time user. I've been yeah. using Twitter ads yeah. and paying for Twitter ads and promoted tweets for as long as they've had them, right? And, you know, right. as a marketer, and they are very incredibly powerful. Um, but I think that you need to be more strategic about what you're marketing and what you're promoting. And um, there are tweets as a brand that just are not worth promoting. No. <laughs> Say they so. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, think about this. I mean, you're, tr you're trying to get rid of the bots inside mm -hmm. of Twitter, right? And they've been doing somewhat successful job of cleaning Whack that Whack-a-mole. Yeah, it really right? is. Uh, <laughs> you use my phrase, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, you're absolutely right. And and then you have this, and it looks so, so ill-conceived, you know, from 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 a Twitter standpoint because they're trying to build their brand mm -hmm. and back from where where it has been. And then you have a uh, you know a, a, a Ed Shock ninety nine dollar uh, month of amplification. I mean, it just cheapens the brand completely. Absolutely, and, and absolutely, it's lazy not only for the individuals wow. I think that use it, but also for the brand itself twitter yeah right yeah <laughs> not a smart move <laughs> oh, okay from a uh, final news article from cnbc facebook ai researchers slam irresponsible reports about the smart bot experiment this is by uh from jordan novet uh tell us about this one tom so i i, I was scrolling through finding news articles for the show and i came across mm -hmm. people were talking about how facebook had uh shut off this ai program uh due to it inventing its own language and so facebook got scared and shut it down and so this article is kind of talking about how that skynet like, yeah <laughs> so this article is kind of talking about how that's irresponsible reporting uh so that's absolutely not true of what happened and it was a uh, an exaggeration of uh, of a report that they released in june and it says an academic paper that facebook published in june describes a normal scientific experiment in which researchers got two artificial agents to negotiate with each other in chat messages mm -hmm. after being shown conversations of humans negotiating uh, the agent's improvement gradually performed through trial and error, but in the past week or so, some media outlets have published reports on the work that are an alarmist in tone, blah, blah, like I said. Uh, it says, at the time of the chatter between the agents did deviate from standard correct English, but that wasn't the point of the paper. The point was to make agents effectively negotiate. Uh, the researchers finished their experiment, and indeed, they noticed that the agents even figured out how to pretend to be interested in something they didn't actually want, <laughs> uh, only later to compromise it by conceding it. <laughs> according to the Facebook research group in the paper. Okay. Um, I think they got way too uh, hyper-reactive about protecting their AI Skynet, Skynet baby. <laughs> yeah. I, Elon I, Musk has warned us about this. I know. I know. Just saying. Who, who was our other... Uh, other, uh, John and Alderson is kind of talking about how robots are going to take over yeah. every part of marketing. Yep. Mm. Good luck. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that show. That show is scary. scared. And uh, I can see uh, in his, his logic how he gets to that point. Yep. But, yeah, it's crazy what machine learning and AI and all that stuff is turning out. So, I mean, we, 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 we've talked about on the show how, like, live chat and uh, messaging through Facebook is mm -hmm. could be the next great yeah. um, customer interaction experience that you can have right but, um they're they're developing a uh a more less uh human way of interacting with customers that uh, they're testing out so terrifying 
Yeah. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You could look at it that yeah, way. Yeah, we had polar opposites <laughs> right here. That's hilarious. All right. So if you want to learn something that won't actually speak back to you uh, and learn what we're doing on a regular basis at the show, that was a kind of a clunky segue, but I'll go with it. Uh, <laughs> check out the newsletter from Edge uh, Edge of the Web on a, um, on a weekly basis. We're sending you over information regarding who we talked about, who we're going to be talking to, who we talked about. <laughs> We're going to we talk about this. Who week? Could you about? Be, please? <laughs> <laughs> All the insider information, as well as everything that we say about them whenever they're gone. Uh, check it out over at edgeofthewebradio.com, or you can text to the number 22828 the word Edge Talk and be able to sign up for your news, our newsletter right then and there. And we will not use any of your emails for anything but good uh, for, and, and to maybe promote some of what we're doing regularly. So check it out. Hey, you always subscribe to all the other newsletters. Jump on and subscribe to ours as well. All right, so let's fo follow all the trending topics over Edge of the Web Radio as we post all the news articles as yep. well. Yep. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's deep dive with this week's featured guest. Now it's time for Edge of the Web featured interview with Mohammed Yassin, Director of Marketing at Perk. Well, Muhammad, you had the deep voice guy going there, but you look a little bit different than that photo. A little bit. Yeah. Grown a little bit of hair since <laughs> yeah. the uh, last headshot. Uh -huh. uh, I think we had that shot from the last time. <laughs> now Indeed. it's time for Edge of the Web featured interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Muhammad, but actually let's talk to him as well. Uh, Muhammad <laughs> Yasin is actually a marketer, published uh, a published author, and a, and a strong belief in the multinational, multi-channel uh, advertising <laughs> that delivers <laughs> results. Well, I mean, you got to advertise in different nations uh -huh. too. Right? <laughs> I uh, have done that. <laughs> see, so I was right. You were right. So, yeah. Step off. <laughs> And, and it results uh, delivered, uh, you know, delivering results via national, traditional, and <laughs> digital <laughs> mediums. Now it's stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so his his work has been recognized for excellence in publications such as Inc. Magazine, uh, MSNBC, Huffington Post, Venture Beat, Read Write Web, and BuzzFeed. And his background in operations, brand awareness, and digital marketing strategy results in a data driven. Uh, approach to creation and fulfillment of scalable media marketing campaigns. I love that paragraph. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're more than welcome. <laughs> it's like, damn. <laughs> All right. So give us your history. I mean, I just kind of kind of meandered through that one. Yeah. Uh, well, give us a back. You covered a lot there, right? Um, you know, moved uh, here to Indianapolis about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, have a online e-commerce background when it comes to marketing, right? Really big on brand. A lot of this is stuff that I've been excited about since I was a teenager, cool. right? Yep. Um, the idea of guerrilla marketing, social media marketing evolved from that, um, general online marketing or advertising AdWords, et cetera, evolved from there. Um, this is something I'm really passionate about, mm -hmm. right? So um, on the way there, I also fell into kind of an operations background <laughs> with my first big boy jobs, right? Yeah. Um, and ended up in kind of larger scale uh, e-commerce operations, more on the customer service and sales sides of things, right? So, um, you know, how do you make sure that 500 people in a call center for a major catalog are all going in the same direction, right? Yeah. Um, and that really lent itself well to marketing and the way that I look at marketing hmm. long term and agile marketing kind of played right into that. So from an operational standpoint, you realize that um, unless you get a plan, Mm -hmm. Unless you have systems, and unless you have the ability for for uh, not going scattergun, but literally being able to see how effective certain certain things were, and then be able to have a repeatable process and be able to adjust that based all on the results, right? Uh, yep. Yep. You get a bit of a maturation there uh, uh, of of how to execute. You got two options, right? You yep. can either come in and uh, maintain the status quo, mm -hmm. right? Just do the same thing over and over again, or you can come in and you can get better every single day that you come into work, right? Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to effectively get better, whether that is in a general operation standpoint or in a marketing standpoint, is if you have the data and you know how to analyze it. If you have processes, you've broken them down and you're able to analyze and say, you know what, I'm going to tweak that right there. I'm going to get an extra 10%, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not doing that, you're just going to stay the same every single day. And someone's going to pass you up and someone's going to take your job and someone's going to take your clients. Yeah, absolutely. And, so, so I mean, to that to that point, um, I mean, these are b basic principles, obviously. Absolutely. But at the same time, our industry, and it's it's, a, it's still a very wild west industry, right? Oh, yes. Oh yes. And, it's an admin, right? <laughs> it really <laughs> it's is. Admin. 
it's uh, geek madman if, if if i could actually kind of merge all that together because we're we're data analysts and never before before in the history of marketing have we been able to have this much this, this many results that we can measure all right absolutely so the data is there the experimentation mindset's there you know that that type of methodology is there yep but there's an environment inside of digital marketing that is so immature when it comes down to that reality is that there's, there's it's such a low um, threshold of of uh, entry into into this environment there, there there absolutely is and i think that you're right over the past it's maybe 10 years right we've really gone further and further in this idea that we're going to use data in the marketing that we're doing right, right. how we're going to measure open rates and click throughs and what words work and what images work and ab testing everything right absolutely um, but one of the areas that we didn't really expand that into until very recently um, is that same mindset of using data and that same mindset of testing in our own operations of our marketing organizations, whether those were an agency model mm -hmm. or in-house, right? Yep. How do we make sure that the individuals who are producing work on a consistent basis have the tools they need to do a great job, right? Have the tools they need to be able to measure their effectiveness and their capacity, right? Yeah. Um, and appropriately project going forward. Right? That's something we're just now getting to and evolving into. I think that's what's going to really drive us forward. So I, I could get myself off into a tangent when it gets down to um, the maturation of the marketer. And, and I mean, this is one of the reasons we do the show right. is to be able to kind of set the bar of why certain – why you should be doing it certain ways and what you should be paying attention to from an analytics standpoint. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I mean, it makes common sense, but you, there's there's a lot of practitioners that don't pay attention to the data that they're getting from those different executions. Or overwhelmed by them. Yeah. Right? Well, there's so I'll much give them, I'll give them that now. too. Well, in operations, see, you got, now you have a, a whole other realm is that it's not only just digital marketing and having to be very steadfast at, at paying attention to the data and be able to have that experimental mindset. Now you have also... The, the the additional execution of wrangling a team of marketers absolutely and having a, a concept of agility along with that because if you don't I mean you can you can be an agile digital marketer but if you're in a legacy type of uh, old world thinking environment from, from where you work in the business model you've got literally conflicting nations so to speak you you've got well, you do you do but i would also say that in most organizations if you're talking about a, a you know a marketing department that's inside of a large organization right, right? um many of the other areas of the organization are going to be operating under that model of here's the process mm -hmm. we work on the process we build it we iterate it right in many organizations marketing is the one area of that company that is not doing that right right so yes you may have some pushback inside of your marketing organization but once you make that happen it actually ties you in a lot tighter to the rest of your organization you start speaking the same language now mm. all of a sudden right all of a sudden it's not that they're walking by and they're saying oh those are the guys that play on facebook all day we don't really know <laughs> what they do right right um now they can understand because you're talking about your production production that always was there right, right. but you're able to communicate it in a way that's understandable to the rest of the company so translating that, so to speak, in, in a way that, I mean, ultimately it gets back down to, to you know, ROIs and these type of things. And, and yep. ROOs, they return on objective of you know, making sure that these the brand objectives and the marketing objectives are, are known uh, company-wide. But when it, comes, when it comes down to executing, right, there are so many things to do. In a in a in a in a full on digital marketing space, absolutely. That you, absolutely. Yeah, you have to you have to work in a way that's digestible because it could be completely overwhelming, just like you're talking about. It's overwhelming, I think, not only for the stakeholders, the people you're delivering product to. So, right, yeah, let's yeah. say a blog is a product, a website's a product, right? The product that you're delivering can be overwhelming to the people that want it, but also even inside the team that's creating it and understanding. What is the work that goes into it, right? How long does it really take to write a blog? They look at it and say, oh, it's like this big, right? It's going to take you like two hours. Just bang it out really quick, right? Um, understanding what the work is for the writer, yeah, right? What's that intake process look like? How long does that take? What does it take to write it? What is the re review process, mm -hmm. the new iterations, and the final product mm -hmm. that's pushed out there? After that's done... Um, Who's the graphic designer? Who's going to create all the graphs that go with it? Who's going to create the header images? What does it take to optimize those for the web, right? Who's responsible for posting it on that website? Is there a calendar already in place? 
can we seriously just drop this on Tuesday or do we have something in place where no, maybe we need to wait until the appropriate slot mm -hmm. next week so that it ranks appropriately on Google because they see consistency, right? Absolutely. Um, all that communication is important in understanding what is that capacity that you have available and then also what's the work that's going to take, right? Frustration happens between, we, we were talking about this earlier, right. uh, you know, Jason and I, um, when you don't know how much work the other person is doing, right. you assume that it looks easy. If they're doing their job right, right. it does look if, easy. If they're doing their job right, it looks really easy, sure. right? It's not. Right. So you assume you can just bang that out really quick. Um, mm -hmm. Understanding, oh, it's going to take you two days. And just having that expectation up front alleviates so much concern and potential yep. angst that you have towards that other individual, that other department, right? Mm -hmm. It just makes it, so it clears the path for collaboration between everyone. It absolutely does. And that's where I wanted to segue. I, we, we laid some groundwork here of what the concept of, of agile marketing is inside of the digital marketing agency, right? But I wanted to make uh, open up this conversation to Jason as well and, sure. and kind of chime in on from an operational standpoint. You are an operations officer of a digital marketing firm. Right. And we are putting through so much content on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. much, and we're managing 40 different different accounts mm -hmm. of different right. brands. And, and all of those brands have different needs and different targets and different marketing goals, right? Yep. Um, I mean, there, therein lies a huge challenge yep. because you, you, you do have this uh, mis misunderstanding from uh, different players of how easy Absolutely. or how difficult, how difficult certain things are. So yep. you kind of got the pulse there of, of this organization, Science Strategics. Give us some of your feedback on on what you've evolved or give, give some insight into what how you've evolved the the execution the operations uh uh of site strategics and uh, um you know some some nuggets of gold so to speak <laughs> as you've come across her yeah well i mean tying into what muhammad just said um you know we recently this was yesterday actually we all had to have a conversation about content and what that looks like um, and just even looking back, we're on our 15th bi-weekly sprint now, so I've been doing it for about 30 weeks. So it hasn't well, been a ton of time. Tell us what a sprint mm -hmm. is first. So a sprint is basically, you mentioned earlier, digestible chunks of information and product delivery, right? Mm -hmm. um, so a sprint is basically a two-week period of time where we say during this amount of time, you know, every employee has X number of capacity, so basically an available number of hours that they can work during that time. And then we assign estimates to the work that we are assigning to them. And we say, okay, based on that, you know, this person's at 80% capacity. That's pretty good. They've got some breathing room, but they can still get all their tasks done. Um, and so then we use that data, obviously, to get better every sprint, which is the beauty of Agile. Um, but as far as how we've evolved the process, like I was saying, the, the other day we just literally ran into this where I would say even – six, eight months ago, we had one producer for each different line of business. So we had a writer, we had a PPC person and SEO person, you know, one person doing that execution. But then there was very little communication between them. So without mm -hmm. Agile, it kind of silos a lot of that work. Mm -hmm. um, and then to Muhammad's point, then everybody's like, okay, well, we only have X number of clients that are getting content or we only have so many clients that are doing PPC. What's that person doing all day? And then right. you have that weird morale hit that you take for that. Whereas now, you know, every two weeks we all get together, we have a meeting called a retrospective where we all look back at the previous sprint and say, how much work got done? How did we do? Were there any roadblocks? And we talk about it. You know, everybody, I mean, it's just a conversation. It's that perception is alleviated of someone's not doing their work because they have to be accountable for it at the end of that sprint. Um, so, I mean, there is, there's a lot of that that we've opened up in this example that I was given from the other day was we've been doing content for a long time. It used to be siloed a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Then we got it to the point where we had the writer was responsible for pushing the task all the way through. They would do the intake. They would do the writing. Um, but then after that, where they would go from there is they would have to then tag another person that was our SEO person to look through it, make sure that it aligns with the goals, make sure that it's, you know, being posted at an appropriate time. And then once he looks through it, then he assigns it to another person to, you know, get the right image with it, get it all posted, get it scheduled and get it out. And then he verifies it, QAs it, and then we complete the task. But the writer completes that task. So we've right. got a bunch of people in there. Mm -hmm. The issue we uncovered, though, was we had one person that wasn't typically in that in that uh, process that the content got assigned to to be published. And then that person said, okay, great. I've got this thing. I've got to go publish it. Publish. And then it got out there. But 
it was outside of process because then Caleb, our SEO tech, did not know that that was that he didn't know the process. Thing. And then we had to pull back a little bit, pull back off, and be like, wait a second, we have to fix this. And you need to mm -hmm. change this. And they want this image. And and so even now, 15 sprints in, we're still you know starting that's to learn. Yeah. And it's that's totally normal. normal. And it's great. And, yeah. that, and that's also very interesting because more and more um, this type of process is being adopted by companies that are a bit cutting edge when it comes down to realizing how this content production is, right. is, is I mean, literally marketing firms, and Gary Vee just had that article out a couple of weeks back about every marketing firm should literally be a, a content producer. I mean, they should be producing new media. And we are. And we are. Right. Sure. Right, right here we are. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, 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 you have to see all the integral parts, parts and, and, and who's relying on who. It's almost like a living, breathing Gantt chart. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. it is. You know? so the Gantt, to the process point, right, it is, a, it is a very much a Gantt chart, right? We, we've been yeah. doing it for, I think we're, we're also run two-week sprints. Everyone does things a little bit differently. I've heard of people that do one week, right? Crazy I've people. Heard, I've heard four weeks, <laughs> right? <laughs> a yeah, a, a week's a bit much for me. Um, so we do two weeks also. We're in sprint 68 right now. Wow. Right? So we've um, nice. been doing it for a little while. And we came, you know, we came into it with the mindset of we wanted to make sure that we were being more effective with our time. Right. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we were being more effective in communicating our time to the outside stakeholders. That was mm -hmm. our main thing when we right. came into it. Right. Was we knew we had a team. Um, we knew we had lots of requests coming in. We wanted to make sure everyone understood what we were doing. So there was no question about it. Right. Because right. there's when you leave empty space, it's going to be filled by something. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Is going to be filled. Someone's going to assume something, right? So we're going to fill that empty space. We're going to make sure everyone understands exactly what we're doing, when we're doing it, um, and we're going to show that we have proof of what has been done. This is something that misses a lot in a lot of, especially internal organizations. I think agencies yeah. do a better job at it, right? Of having the list of deliverables. This is what we did for you last month, right, and here's right, our billable right. hours connected to it. Inside marketers do not generally do a great job because they're so busy at the other part of it, um, of saying, if someone walks up to your desk, what did you guys accomplish last month? I, yeah. I'll come back in half an hour. I'll get you, and mm -hmm. then you're scrambling, going through sheets, yeah, going yeah. through yeah. project yeah. management on my tools. Calendar. What yep. did I release? Right? <laughs> yeah. um, what are those random things that popped up that someone walked over and asked me to do that I didn't put on my actual release yeah. calendar? But I need to make sure those are in there too because it probably took half my time. Right? That yeah. is demoralizing <laughs> because they start looking at what they were in intending to get out, and they realize that most of their time just got sucked over, Into sucked in by else. somebody else. Because yep. we live in a responsive yeah. world, right? The things that you you can plan for a quarter out, you can plan for a year out, sure. but when you're in you know November of 2017, right? Do you really know specifically what needs to happen in week three of December 2018? No, not really. <laughs> you know, when you plan that granular, something's going to pop up that you have to react to. News of the day, right? We just went through that. You can't say exactly you're going to be talking about AI. You wouldn't have known that <laughs> two months ago. That you're going to be yeah. talking about AI today, <laughs> right? Yeah. There's going to be things. We that have pop actually up. known that. Uh, we've known that for about Bots told three, you uh, well, three and a half years ago. We started seeing Skynet arise, and and we knew. We uh, we absolutely know. So I mean that's what, that's what we're into. So we're we're gonna we're gonna make sure we know what we're doing. We're gonna make sure we can communicate very quickly and very easily exactly what we did, mm -hmm. and we're gonna show that not just going in, in the past review mirror, but also in the future. That if we say we're gonna get X done, right, we get X done. And we can show that ahead of time and we can project out and tell you exactly how we're going to be two weeks, at least two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. It allows right. us to be reactive but still plan in a good way, right? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, uh, I, got, I got a question for you. So the concept of agile, right? And you know, we're, we're talking about processes and we're talking about getting things done. It just seems, you know, for everything we're talking about right now just seems to be more of just operational efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and let's reflect on agile. Agile puts something else into the mix, not just burning it down, not making sure that we're, we, we pull all our tasks into full, accountable two-week sprints, and, and, right. and once we can get them done, we've effectively done our job, right? But Agile is a little bit different. Agile is responsive. It's results-based. It's the experimental mindset of exactly. hypothesizing certain things that are going to happen with these marketing efforts, right? Yep. And then seeing the results, either for or against or hypothesis, and then see from that what else you want to repeat or change direction, then feeding that back into the efficiency system that you've got. It's making sure you have a process built in for that, right? So in a, in a normal agile you know, perspective, if we, if, we, if we start at the beginning, right, agile is really about taking a 
deliverable product that could be a blog, right? That could be an entire website project and breaking it down into its component parts. Right. And then estimating the effort it's gonna to take to do each one of those parts, making sure you have clear assignments of those and communication across it, right? Um, you know, the next big thing after that is chunking those into, just like the Gantt chart or a project plan, chunking those into the appropriate sprints. We're gonna do this one in sprint one, this one in sprint four, this one in sprint six, right? Um, and then having a mechanism there where you can take in data and redo it, right? So you start with a planning session, you run your two weeks, you do a retrospective session. The retrospective, you sit down, you say, what worked? What didn't work? What did we absolutely screw up on in the last two weeks that's not gonna work, right? And you mentioned earlier, oh, we just changed the process. Yep. I, we changed our process so many times over mm -hmm. the first six months mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. every two weeks, the process of sitting down and talking, we realized something wasn't right that we mm -hmm. needed to tweak. Yeah. Sometimes it was major, sometimes it was tiny, right? But every two weeks we got better and better and better at what we did and how efficient we were. Hmm. And honestly, even how happy we were at doing the job that we were doing. That's, a, we that's, were that's a piece of measurement right, right there. It absolutely is. Was there, what, can you explain what one of those things were that you learned that you changed in those first six months? So one of the, yeah. the, the when we first started, right, we, you assign what's called points to, as an estimate okay. of effort, yeah. right? So, you know, a thing could be worth one point or it could be worth two points or 10 points or mm -hmm. whatever, right? You try mm -hmm. to break it down into small pieces as possible. You, what you don't want to do, though, is you want to, don't want to get so small that you've broken that uh, piece down into time tracking of 15 minute increments, mm. maybe, for example, maybe, right? Yeah. Where all of a sudden someone's asking, well, where's that 15 minutes that you owe me? It's not about that, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Somebody gets slapped. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally. <laughs> so we said, you know what? We aren't going to let anyone do a task or estimate it smaller than uh, one point, which for us roughly equated to... Um, actually half a point, we roughly equated to about two hours, mm -hmm. right? So start, finish, intake, it's going to take you about two hours. Well, then we realize there's so many things that someone walks up and asks you for, right, that maybe it does take you 20, 30 minutes to do. But if you put all those in as zeros, it's fine until all of a sudden those zeros add yeah. up to a full day of work. Yeah. And you hit the end of the sprint and you're like, well, I know I did all this. I got it all checked off on the board. How come I still have stuff left over that I didn't get to? I know I estimated, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because all those zeros weren't really zeros. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were actually 0.25s, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the things that we realized after a couple of sprints worth is that we had so many little things that actually added up to much bigger things that didn't seem consequential and actually were, mm -hmm. right? And we said, you know what? We need to just break this down into some smaller components. We're now going to allow a quarter point, right? And that, that, I mean, that's a, a simpler example sure. of things, right? We yeah. also had bigger just overall process changes where we realized, Jason just mentioned one, right? Oh, the whole process doesn't work. It's not going through the right people, but we didn't know that because we never all got in the same room and talked about it. Yep. Right? Yep. So. so it's being agile, not only um, on the results-based type of uh, marketing concept that we were just talking about, but it's being agile and flexible. And learning mm -hmm. each and every two weeks, two week execution on what's going well, what's going wrong, and yep. and it's collaborative. What we can, what can we do to fix it? So no, it's also breaking the 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 silos, breaking the not All my not my job mentality, mm -hmm. right? It, even even more so. I think we found it even more important breaking those silos inside of the department. We don't have a giant team, mm -hmm. but when you have a team of people who are very specifically tasked with a thing and they're great at their job. Silos build on their own because of the fact that people are so focused on what they're doing. It just is what it is. And you're right. We, you know, we went into this with mindset. We kind of had a, and I'm not, you know, the, the end result is important. How we get there is not, right? right. Yes, yeah. I built this uh, program over the course of months. We destroyed it in weeks. <laughs> and that's okay because we got better every time we sat down and changed something. Oh, that's... Well that's fantastic. So uh, applying Agile to mar marketers, uh, by and large, can, can we as marketers succeed without Agile? I don't think so. Right? I'm obviously a little biased, right? Uh, yeah, a little um, bit. 68. 68 <laughs> mostly because of the fact that, you know, I spent years marketing with Agile, or without Agile. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now 68 sprints in, I can't imagine not having done it that way because I realized the level of growth of myself and of my team right. and of our overall product was nowhere near what it is in this particular type of model. We had learns. 
we didn't have this this scale of learning mm. happening at all. So I don't think you can. Um, also, I think that as we start moving into more and more of a data driven world, mm -hmm. the idea that you can you know revert back to marketing of 20, 30 years ago, where you know you just kind of sit back and you hope you throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and hope something like works, and mm -hmm. then you come out and it's just like magic, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? It works, right? <laughs> blockbuster campaign um that's that's just doesn't work anymore mm. there are more marketers out there to compete with you right right, right. you have a smarter consumer yep. and you have a proliferation of uh distribution channels that just weren't a thing it's not do i do radio uh, billboards or that fancy new thing called tv right <laughs> now you've got literally hundreds of channels in multiple different mediums that you've got to choose between and you're not going to be effective at reaching your audience unless you're using data and taking a process driven approach to yeah, it. And and then with with the advent of programmatics now even more so uh, it's 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 so niche and so uh, di uh, di not diverse but it is diverse. I it mean is. there's so many areas you have to have almost like a a, uh, a 15, 50,000 foot view of things, but yep. still right there at the granular level, hitting each and every lever going, okay, did this work? Did this work? But exactly. you have to have that gestalt mindset. There's your there's your word for the day. <laughs> gestalt. <laughs> Look it up. All right. So, uh, so, so, so they can, they, they can literally, they, they can't succeed in where we're going. In you marketing. can survive. There it is. But you can't succeed. Oh, see. Yeah. There, right. there, there's a good, good separation. Right. So, how has marketing as a whole changed over the years, uh, and and where does Agile fit in all this? Because, I mean, we certainly know where we've come from. Absolutely, we do know where we come from, and I think it gets back to that that idea of, you know, if you're going to be successful at navigating through all these different choices, yep. you have to have a process driven approach to that. Right. It doesn't mean that you are destroying the creativity of marketing. Right. What it does mean, though, is that you are creating an environment where that creativity can flourish and thrive. You're creating mm. a structure around which you can bring in new people and get them up to speed fast. Mm. Right. A structure in which your existing team can continue to improve. Right. I mean, the team that we had when we started started uh, using Agile, we'd been together for a while. I mean, we'd actually we'd been together for a few years. We kind of had our own shorthand or so we thought. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we started doing this and actually having these uh, these these meetings uh, through the process, all of a sudden we realized we have huge gaps in our actual understanding of what each other do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. From the designer to the writer to the mm -hmm. strategic person to you know the the, the Salesforce admin guy, right? right? Um, there was a huge disconnect across different disciplines of what the work was that it took to get something done, mm. and there was a disconnect in the value of what each individual was doing. Not from the team, but from the individual person themselves, right? right. Designer gets a, 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 a task, do this banner ad. They're going to do the banner ad, but do they really know what it's for? No, they didn't. They didn't know until we started uh, having these retrospective meetings where all of a sudden everyone comes to the table and they share, like, this is what we did this in the past two sprints. And you see, oh, my God, six other people were right beside me working on this and created this beautiful final campaign product, mm -hmm. right? We never spent the time to stop and look, and, and, and look at that before. You delivered your banner ad, and you went to your next banner ad, or you went to your next hero image, or you went to your next whatever, right? And it looks like you a bloody, never na saw bloody NASCAR. It distributed. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, oh, never, you never saw it distributed, let alone never saw the results, which that campaign manager is going to come with down the road to that to that retrospective meeting to say hey this campaign did this i'm really proud of it right, right? or it didn't do this yeah. and this is where i struggle with that conversation never happened with anyone other than in that, my case me the manager mm -hmm. they came to me in their one-on-one -on -one and said oh this didn't go very well or this went gangbusters no one else learned from that unless I personally remembered to tell each yeah. and every person on the team in their one-on-ones over the next two weeks. And it's just not going to happen. Just the awareness <laughs> of, of the campaigns and and, yeah. and seeing that you're part of an execution. And, and something bigger. Absolutely. Everyone wants to be part of something bigger than their individual contribution, right? Yep. You have to have a cause, a goal. This yep. provided that. Yeah. Exactly. Well, um, the, the, uh, it's fantastic to be able to unpack Agile. Um, observations, I mean, you're on 68, we're on 15? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yep. So, where is <laughs> oh. he? Where is he going to be? <laughs> What's the little guy? He's so nice. No, no. But the point is, is where is he heading? I mean, 
I mean, you, uh, well, uh, actually, this is a bit of a review process now. Uh, <laughs> no, I think Jason, I mean, should I leave? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason and I talk quite a bit. What's in store for him? I mean, because he's literally, he has... Crying in the fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> for a while, right? What's in, store, what's in store for you is not doing that anymore, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> like, I can't wait. You know, once you get down, that, down to the point where a team's comfortable with it, all the stakeholders are comfortable with it, you've worked out all the kinks, you've eliminated the wasteful parts of the process and improved the parts that are more yep. streamlined, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you have to look forward to. You also have you know, to look forward to a, a huge increase in productivity because oh. of reducing waste in your production, wow. oh, sure. right? That's what you got to look forward to, you know, 50 sprints down the road. And I will say also that, you know, so long. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him, you know, props as well, because I've been, I've been absolutely watching his process since before yep. he started when he was planning it. And, um, he was also very smart about reaching out to people who had absolutely. been doing the product project, that type of, uh, you methodology before. So much time. Well, and, so and, 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 I, and I'm glad we were able to help you with that because sure. what better way is there to improve process than maybe sometimes getting ahead of it, looking around the corner yeah. with other people and saying, hey, what did you guys screw up on? Because yeah. I'm just going to avoid that. I'm not yeah. even going to go through that learning process. I'm yeah. going to learn from you instead, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say that about your, your minimum chunk of time thing because we just started with that. We started with a half hour <laughs> is our minimum now. Um, so we didn't have to go through that learning phase for two or three or four or five sprints. So, I mean, yeah, that instantly saved us a ton of time. So, yeah, that was great learning from you. Now, we actually looked at Agile about two and a half years ago, mm. looking at Agile from a product base uh, execution. So Agile uh, or iterative uh, mm -hmm. type of uh, process is, is I sh shouldn't say widely used, but it actually is being executed at the web build standpoint where i mean literally you just develop uh uh and we actually uh, uh, our friends at wdd soft wdd software actually helped us understand this mm -hmm. and we had jason uh, borg on the show a while back talking about it it's it's uh you just you know take the login screen that's it that's all yep. you're building and yep. it's a, and you and and the client is fully fine with that we were just moving down the line of different pieces as opposed to this long you know seemingly bloated project but it, i mean there's a heck of a lot of things that need to be built so you're getting good client gratification because they see exactly what they just paid for yep. you can move on move yep. on yep. move on they do it in two weeks sprints as well it what it wasn't time for us to be able to apply that type of methodology internal no so it and it makes sense that you'd get it from there too i mean agile is a, it, it came out of the it world yeah, right exactly they developed this process this idea this methodology of going about it same thing for me I and mean, i got it also from our it department you know where we are a software you know company focused on web See, conversion right the smarter people uh, are over <laughs> it that it department had been using agile for years yep. and you know it was working for them it was allowing them to create and iterate very fast on a product, mm -hmm. learn from it, and move it to the next level in a way that we were not able to do before they were using Agile, right? They shared those learns from us. We decided to start using the same exact thing and to the point of speaking the same language, yep. right? There mm -hmm. is, you know, there's, there's a connection between digital marketing and the IT world. We need each other in order to succeed. We Absolutely. need those programmers. We need those web developers. Yeah. Um, when we're speaking the same language and we're both speaking in points, yeah. Right. Yeah. It allows all of us to once again iterate a whole lot faster. Yeah. Uh, I do have to uh, give a shout out to uh, uh, our account executive Jared Jewett. He's uh, on Facebook. He uh, just wanted to thank you for uh, uh, giving us so much secret sauce up front. It was a major help, and he also uh, uh, proclaimed, "Hey, seventy-five percent of his lifetime bosses are all at one table." Wow. <laughs> yeah. So Weird. if I so if I Small leave, world. it'll be one hundred percent. No offense, but <laughs> or, I can, or or you can just uh, give me a, a title boost or something. All right, yeah, fantastic. Just, there we go, Jared. Now we you report to Tom. Yeah, you're over there now. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's certainly a pleasure to, to talk to you. And, I, you know, I almost want to have a bit of a sprint check-in uh, <laughs> that we can do on, on a regular basis because we, we, want, we want to be able to help share what Agile really is yeah. at a national level. Yeah. We, we yeah. can actually be uh, strong evangelists and, yeah. and, and uh, advocates for yeah. this process. I was going to ask before we wrapped Absolutely. up, if somebody's interested in learning more about the Agile process, what, what are some good resources uh, – 
places to go. So to people I would learn say, more. you know, from a uh, from a software perspective company, um, Jira, which uh, they yep. create, they're Alaskan, they create Jira, HipChat, Confluence, a couple of other things that are really based around agile marketing. They also have a lot of great uh, webinars and other tools on their website that I learned a lot from to get started on, right? right. Their marketing department actually uses agile and talks about exactly how they do it through a lot of the content that they produce, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is just like, uh, you know, Jared did and just like Jason did, reaching out to other marketers who are using the agile um, you know methodology it is growing by the day every day there's more and more people that are coming around um, you know we I, I belong to a group called agile marketing indie that uh, has been running for about five or six months we meet monthly and it's just a knowledge share we have yeah. it broken out just like it we do a retrospective someone comes in talks about what they what worked for them over since the last time we talk about uh, what we could be doing, mm -hmm. um, not only in that meeting, but also through LinkedIn, right? There's a there's a LinkedIn group also, Agile Marketing Indie. Join there. It's a great opportunity just to chat with other people who are talking about it, um, whether it's here at Site Strategics. <laughs> Jared and Jason are part of that. I'm in there, um, co-founder for that, uh, Eva Jackson over at Amplify. Mm -hmm. She also runs the LinkedIn group, um, does a great job of coordinating all of those marketers, wrangling us, getting us in one place, right? And getting us to actually talk in a meaningful way and share those so that yeah. also me, also at Sprint 68 can learn every single month or every single day that I'm logging into LinkedIn from everyone else's oh, learns and mistakes. And it's been huge for me still as well. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, we would certainly, as a firm, love to host one of those meetings and, and, and be able to, to be able to just thank uh, the entire community of, of marketers who are inside of Agile because that's it, great. it has truly shifted uh, in, a, in a very positive way how we execute and how we how we serve our clients. So I truly appreciate that. Um, final thoughts? I, I found the the definition of Gestalt psychology. Uh, uh, been working over there. Gestalt uh -huh. psychology is a philosophy of mind from the Berlin School of Air Experimental Psychology. Say that word. Okay. Uh, Gestalt psychology is an attempt to understand the laws behind the ability to acquire and maintain meaningful perceptions in an apparently chaotic world. Uh -huh. I'm saying. Is there a, a, a world outside of marketing that is... Uh, Chaotic from the outside, but actually has focus, <laughs> right? Do you, do you think I used it appropriately? You did. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a whole right Wikipedia there. article about <laughs> Gestalt <Awesome>. psychology. <laughs> so. Ooh, we should be doing Good Gestalt work. marketing. <laughs> ah, uh, here there it is. Post coming here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, uh, to, 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 to wrap up, Muhammad, can you tell us what bugs you about your industry right now? You know, I, I don't know that there's anything that like really gets under you're, my you're skin. You're too super nice, honestly, man. Right? Come on. I mean, just uh, give me something. <laughs> we are in a great time in marketing right now. There's so much that has happened over the past few years that we've increased our abilities. The stuff we're producing now mm -hmm. is amazing, mm -hmm. right? I think that as digital marketers, I'm super excited about the fact that we got past our awkward teenage years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We did a lot of really dumb stuff online for a while. <laughs> yes, we, we really <laughs> ran over some people's toes and ruffled some feathers. Sure. <laughs> and we are getting to a place where we're really serious about engaging consumers online or whether that's in a B2B or a B2C sense in a way that is meaningful to them and adds value, um, not only with our content, on our websites, et cetera. I'm excited about what's happening right now. Just couldn't You couldn't unpack any <laughs> negative, could you? You are too nice. If man. you had brought me in three years ago, I probably would have had a lot to say. We have matured so much. So you're saying agile, <laughs> agile so solves everything? I don't think necessarily. It was just, wasn't just agile, right? <laughs> yeah, Honestly, sure. we, we we got our uh, we got our butt spanked a little yeah. bit from you know from a lot of people online for quite a while. We we made some mistakes, yeah. right? But I think that not just agile, but also the idea or the movement towards data and process by marketers mm. in general, right? It's not just about just agile marketing, but that move towards process in general really allowed us to learn from those mistakes yep. and find the things that really worked. We, when you're doing testing, I'll consider that a testing phase. Maybe those awkward teen years were a testing phase, right? Yep. You threw a lot of stuff out there, a lot of A-B testing. You are going to have a lot of failures when you're testing that much stuff. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. We got through it. <laughs> still, we still, some you know, stumble. still, through, we still yeah. stumble here and there. There's still some <laughs> folks that maybe uh, want to hold on to the, the, the idea of just, I don't know, keyword stuffing everything. There right? it is. Yep. Um, <laughs> but as a general rule, the industry, I believe, has moved past and we've, we've made some, some great headway. I think we all, I, I, I'll double down on that. I think as we interview more and more innovators and thought leaders, and I'll, 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 I'll not be scared using that. I mean, literally, uh, the, the phrase is very, very important. There are thought leaders out there. And we're hearing more and more 
of the mat the maturity of the of the of the of the digital marketer and it's all backed by data mm -hmm. and we're hearing agile regularly across the country so we're hearing this and I mean, we, we happen to be in a particularly unique position to be able to have that metric, almost that that, that yardstick of, okay, where are we? Right? Exactly. And we're seeing that really starting to codify now that that there's there's this new level of maturity. And I mean, uh, individuals that are are even helping grade other marketers and doing it for the for the entire ecosystem. I mean, right. and they're 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 understanding more about. Um, the the entire marketing uh, community and they're sharing. There's so much sharing going on right now. That Isn't was it beautiful. Oh, it's an amazing thing, and and people are are finding their their fit with other other people uh, that are wanting to be able to help. And there's such a, a give back now that we've just not seen. So I'm really excited as, as as like I said, double down on what you're talking about. We are in a new. I don't want to say a golden age mm -hmm. you know, because that always. It's kind of the apex, and everything falls after that. Oh, there's so much more to come. We're just getting started. <laughs> Absolutely, but we're we're earning our stripes now more than ever, and there's process associated to to the the marketing product now. Yep, fantastic, yeah, I agree. fantastic. <laughs> so, is there anything that we can promote for you uh, to wrap up the show? Absolutely. So, one thing I mentioned, uh, I've you know I've been talking a lot about you know online engagement, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the right thing on your website. That's something that is a company perk we're really focused in on is how we can help marketers in that B2C space make sure that they are engaging consumers on their website in the most appropriate ways, right? Um, making sure that they're not being interruptive, making sure they're providing value in real time, making sure that even in those small to medium sized businesses, you're able to act like an Amazon, act like a Netflix, where the website's remembering who you are, mm -hmm. right? Where the website is personalizing itself to you as you go along, where the website's not asking you the same questions over and over and over again. We love our forms, right, as marketers, yep. right? We love a contact us form, we love a get more information form. Right. Why is it that for most websites, you fill out one request form, you go to the next page and fill out another request form and it asks you for your name all over again. We wouldn't stand for that nope. in real world. No, I haven't seen not. you in years. I probably would have been offended if I walked in here and you're like, hey, who are you again? <laughs> we do that every day online. Perks web engagement tools help you solve those challenges you know, in a really effective way for small and medium-sized businesses. And then from a, from a marketing perspective also, after you get done checking that out, mm -hmm. definitely uh, you know, join Jason and I, join yep. you know, Jared and I, join us in that agile marketing um, kind of world, right? There's a lot of learns that are happening just by us being able to speak with each other mm -hmm. and talk about, once again, th that knowledge share, that knowledge transfer, what's working, what's not working. You know, just Google Agile Marketing Indie. We've got an Eventbrite page. Um, also search for that on uh, LinkedIn. Or, um, you know, hit me up on, on Twitter or LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, and I'll be happy to, you know, share that information with you, either for myself or for uh, Eva Jackson over at Amplify, who's doing, a, I think, a great job uh, continuing Absolutely. to keep the good group moving forward. Well, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, some Just some quick connections to you. Uh, your Twitter, Twitter handle is Muhammad Inc. Yep. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you have incorporated yourself. Hey. <laughs> That's a true sign of an entrepreneur right there. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, on on top of that, uh, go uh, check out uh, uh, Muhammad over at LinkedIn and Muhammad Yasin, uh, as well as Instagram on Muhammad Inc. as well. And uh, we'll see all the pictures of my cat, and my kids. There you are. Aww. Aww. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Well, we certainly appreciate your time today, and uh, it was w it was very well due us uh, talking about. Site strategics for a t for a change, and and what we're doing here uh, in Indianapolis, and adopting new practices, and and uh, aligning ourselves with some great educators and great and great uh, leaders in the agile marketing space. Let alone just, just some great marketers here in Absolutely. Indianapolis. Um, so with that, we're going to actually bid everybody adieu. Uh, you know, the whole point of this show is to educate. So please share this show to uh, uh, to different marketers that that are interested in the agile uh, uh, marketing ex uh, execution because these guys are doing some fantastic jobs here, and especially with the entire agile community here in Indianapolis. So check them all out. Thank you very much for for your time today, no, as well as me. hey, I think the newbie did a pretty good yeah, job. Yeah, you did great. Right. You weren't I, awkward at all, I don't think I Jason. embarrassed myself. Not at all. We'll do, next we'll, we'll do all that in post. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's funny hats on me. Snap yeah. at me up. Okay. Absolutely. All I right. So so make sure that you check all the information that we broadcast out on a regular basis over Edge of the Web Radio. All the videos, insider information, and much more at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. Bye-bye.